Sometimes when we're sewing, we run into an instruction for one or more of the elements to the sewing pattern that don't work for us. That's what happened with this sleeve. I understood the directions, but I wasn't really able to accomplish a decent looking product following the directions. So I came up with a method that works perfectly for me. I'm going to show that method in this video. I will not be using the method that the pattern has included in the instructions. It is basically just a quick little workaround that makes it so much easier for me to accomplish the goal and that is to create the hem and the tuck for the sleeve. All right, my dandelions, I think I have the sleeve thing figured out. This is clearly just basted and it's the one it's one of the two that I originally had cut out so my sides are shorter now than the actual sleeve because I cut that seam allowance out. These are the two new sleeves with the proper they've been cut out before stitching but I wanted to work on this until I figured out exactly how it would work flawlessly and I think I have a method so let's review super quick here we go so I marked I made little notes I made this note and that is almost true of everything I sew. If I have done it one way and the instructions tell me something else, I'm still going to do it my way. Here we go. The most important part about the sleeve is getting the placement of the two stitch lines, which are those broken lines on the pattern, and the fold line marked. It's extremely difficult to make this sleeve if you do not have those three lines very well marked. I'm using a water erasable pen for this. Now this sleeve I'm working on is my practice and mock-up and I will keep it with the pattern because I had to end up cutting two new sleeves out but I'm demonstrating on my original cuts. So I'm just going to draw a line and draw another line and when you get those two on top of one on top of the other the fold line is evident now we're looking for the right side and wrong side we are going to take the bottom edge of this sleeve and we're going to fold up one inch so let's see that one inch this line right here. Alright, so you fold that up right along that line or whatever you choose, however you choose to mark that one inch and then press it. I'm not going to do that right now. So you've got that one inch folded up and pressed. Okay, now once you've got that folded, pressed, whatever, however, that one inch, we are then going to, on this side, we're not going to do anything else. The instructions say to go ahead and stitch the sleeve right here. I'm not doing that because I can't manipulate these little tiny sleeves as well if they're like that right there as I can when they're laying flat. Now the the reason that we're doing it this way is because we have to catch this raw edge right here, that raw edge, 
I have to catch it in this fold. So I'm going to fold it over to the top line that I drew. And I'm going to pin it down. And if you're not sure that you've managed to catch that raw edge in the folded area under here, you can kind of peek in there to see. And I didn't. I did not catch it. I'm not surprised because my fabric hasn't been pressed, but I can just go back and fold it up. It did kind of slip away. You can actually see if I push down right here, that raw edge is going to be in this fold. It's not down here on the edge, which is what kept happening to me when I was doing it with the sleeve already stitched at these two side seams. Now you take this over to your, your sewing machine and you stitch right along that edge and you should be able to see your mark that you made, the little dotted mark. Okay, I'm gonna stitch it and I'll show you what I mean when I come back. All right, so here I have, I've just done a basting stitch again and I'll tell you the truth, the reason I'm doing these as basting stitches is I'm going to keep these two sleeves with this pattern so that I can see what I did. This one, this this will be step, kept like that, and this one, I don't think I'm gonna finish it all the way, but I wanted you to see it. So let me grab my scissors. If I have to undo all the stitches, I will, because I think it's important that we understand what the heck we're doing. Okay, so this is the wrong side of the sleeve. When you're looking at this right here, wrong side. So now we're going to open this out like so, and we're going to press this little tuck this direction, and this part right here is the bottom edge of the hem, like so. And then if we stitch this little sleeve together, which I'll do real quick, using a basting stitch so I can take it out later if I need to. You will need to want to match those up when you take it over to the sewing machine. Make sure they're both lined up on, I'll show you what I mean, right here. These two need to be perfectly aligned. Otherwise, they'll be off. It will be clearly obvious. When we turn this right side out like so this should be better aligned but this is what that's supposed to look like So in this segment, I'm actually making the sleeves that will be inserted onto the bodice of the baby bubble. On this second sleeve, I'm marking my lines. And I really did do a bunch of checking. I'm just going to say it was like check, double check, triple check. And then I actually go back and I check again. I use the pattern. I draw pilot lines, 
making sure that these lines will actually be identical on both the right sleeve and on the left sleeve. I'm going to connect. Now that line right there is the fold line. This one is a stitch line and this one is also a stitch line. I just went on either side of the fold line. Okay, now I'm folding up one inch for the bottom hem and pinning it double check to make sure that I have an inch from the fold which I do straightening out my pins I do like I said a lot of checking <laughs> I'm going to make sure that these sleeves are correct I really wanted to make sure I had no doubt I do believe that in the second bubble that I make or the little romper it won't be such a, um, a foreign affair I allowed my confidence level to drop because the instructions in the pattern did not mesh with the way my brain thinks and I know better than that so anyway alright so now I'm getting up to the part where I'm, I'm basically straightening the pins. I didn't want to press the pins into the fabric, but I did, and as it turned out, it was fine. The, uh, the, the marks that the pins left were minimal, and of course those are crystal head pins, so they didn't melt and leave horrible residue on the fabric. But I do have... Um, some best press that I sprayed onto the fabric after I made them, after I got it all done, and those marks came out. So if you ever wonder, it won't be a problem. The number one most important thing about these sleeves is that these two edges must meet. They must be even. So if I have to baste them, which you know how I feel about basting, and then stitch, or you know, stitch and tear the stitches out and restitch, I just have to make sure that those two little tucked seamed hems are perfectly straight and even and that for me really the only way to do this sleeve is open like this so I will have that fiddly bit to deal with alright so the next thing in line here is we're going to make sure that this part this lower edge that's a raw edge is folded over on top of and we're going to use that line that we drew on our from our pattern piece as our guide. It's easy enough when this sleeve is opened out like this to look in there and make sure you're catching that. It has to be enclosed like let's see if I can get this to show up. Like this. It you have to be stitching on top of that otherwise you will have this come out and it won't be a hemmed sleeve so that you have to fold over I'm going to try to get zoomed in here fold over on top of this raw edge Let's see if I can point to it so it's right here and I'm folding down on top of that I think you can see it yeah right there 
I'm going to stitch and then when I come back from doing that I will show you what it looks like before I press it remembering of course to fold my pattern piece so that the number is visible makes it so easy to find what I'm looking for in the pattern envelope which by the way if you're just joining us this is view E of the McCall's 3063 right there and we're doing view E and we're also we're doing this in the baby blue Imperial Batiste by Speckler Vogel and then we're going to do view F in the white Imperial Batiste by Speckler Vogel alright so let me get these stitched with both of these little seams stitched I will now be able to press them at the ironing board so the next what happens is you take it off of the sewing machine you've stitched right along this edge and those stitch lines um, are the dotted dashed lines so you'll just stitch along the dashed line if you drew it on there and if like me you miss it just a little tiny bit just open this up and trim out there'll be a little bit of fabric because I did not stay as you can see I kind of wobbled off of that little barely there you might not even be able to see it so just open it out and trim out carefully you don't want to cut your sleeve so you'll have a little bit like right there I've got this little bit of fabric so I'm just gonna snip that away it won't show because this is on the inside and we press this little tuck this way and our hem that we made by folding up that one inch down and that would be the sleeve so here's the same thing we would just press the tuck toward the top of the sleeve this way and this fold down okay so I'll take care of that and when I come back that's when I have to be this now is the right side of the fabric where the tuck is and I'll have to make sure that both of these tucks are facing up and that I can match my stitching and that that would be perfectly straight and my notches will meet up like all of this and then I will stitch this sleeve and when I turn it to the right side it should be absolutely perfectly matched that's what we're hoping for I'll be right back I recommend that before you stitch that you pin this I would not use those clips just simply because you can't really get that accurate you know meet up right there and because they won't nest and by nest I mean one seam allowance is going one direction and the other is going the opposite direction our tuck will both be facing you know toward the top of the sleeve this way so I would pin right on your stitch line because you can see it from both sides okay make sure that you're right on that and remember this is not the instruction that is provided in the pattern because when I tried to do it that way I discovered that I was not able to it the sleeve is so small that trying to stitch this tuck with this stitch already in place this little underarm seam was just impossible for me now there could be those that have that ability and if that's the case then I am in awe and proud and I say that would probably be the way to do it if not if you like me were struggling to get this to stay folded 
and then take it to the sewing machine, even pinned, and have it stay in place and not just be a big mess, then I would suggest that you try to do it this way. So my, th my thinking on this is I'm going to baste because I want to see if I'm close. And if I've basted and it looks good, then I'll go ahead and just stitch and then pull out my basting threads. So we'll see what this looks like when I come back. All right, this one is basted. I'm just going to, I don't think I'll turn it completely out. I'm just going to open this seam up and see just how close or how off I am. Ooh, yeah, I think I'll have to do it again because there is a slight variance. It's almost, almost impossible to see, but this little part right here is slightly higher. It's just off enough that I think it would drive me crazy. So... I'm going to do it again. All I have to do is pull these basting stitches out. Now I don't want to do this too many times. It, after a while your fabric will start to suffer. Now that I know where it was off, I'm just going to gently push that together and quickly baste it one more time just see okay that's perfect so I will stitch this with a regular stitch but as you can see they they match up and once it's pressed it'll be a lot more evident that they are matched up but there we go that's what you want it to look like. So I will leave that there. I'm going to baste this one as well. Then I will stitch when they're both perfect and press. And then we're going to insert the sleeves into our little bodice. Okay, so we are now at the part where we're going to take this little dot at the top of the sleeve. And we're going to match that up with our, our uh, shoulder seam right here, right sides together. Now, I other people do it differently, I know. Um, this is my version. I do this this way. All right, so then I've got that first thing uh, pinned. So now I'm going to take the remaining part of the bodice and flip it over this sleeve like so. So I just lay those two things together, like so. I'll do it again. So here's my bodice, right side out, and my shoulder seam, all of the pieces of the arm side are together. You may have basted yours. I'm not going to baste. It's just way too much thread. I don't need to do it. But this right here, so this little, spot right here is the shoulder seam and this little dot right here is what I'm talking about that's on the pattern piece a little blue dot right there I'm gonna take this dot and I'm gonna match it up with this shoulder seam I'm not my sleeve is right side out everything is right side out so I'm just going to match that up when I get it all situated, I'll come back and over that way so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to put a pin like so, right there. Then I'm going to take the bottom part of this bodice, the lower edge of the bodice, and fold it over like this so that now I'm looking at the inside of the bodice. So it's just take the bottom lower edge of the bodice and flip it over the top of that sleeve. Just practice doing that a couple times. Now, 
it's it's not as complicated as it looks but it's a complicated concept so I understand the need for practice before you do anything just keep saying okay I'm just gonna flip it over the top because when you look at a pattern and it says with right sides together pin sleeve into the armhole it becomes a brain battle it literally can become a confusing I'm going to lose my mind brain battle but that's all you're doing is you're just gonna take the top of the sleeve pin it to the shoulder seam insert a pin pick up the bottom of the bodice and just flip it right over the top all right here's my pen I can see it plain as day so I'm gonna reach in here and I've got you know my lining my bodice and my sleeve okay so I gotta find the sleeve seam which is in there you'll find it okay there's the bottom edge of the sleeve seam and lo and behold because I flipped this whole thing over the right side of my bodice is matched up with the right side of my sleeve and all I have to do is match those two seams together yep and pin so you have the top and the bottom are pinned right the other two parts that have to be pinned are the out this side over here and this side over here and this is where you want those notches that you made in the bodice to match up with the notch on the sleeve so making sure that all of those pieces are together match up those notches and pin again and do it to both sides you'll have the big double notch on one side and the little single notch on the other side so the sleeve and the bodice and all the lining and all that stuff all have to be matched up together so now we have the top the bottom and both side notches pinned down and as it turns out there is excess fabric to deal with and I didn't want to gather it like a little girl sleeve so I simply pushed the fabric toward the top where the shoulder seam is on the bodice and you'll see what that looks like in just a minute I really liked the outcome it's it forms a little inverted tuck on the outside and here we go okay so this is the excess fabric and I'm just pushing with my fingers to get it right on that top shoulder seam allow or seam and then you just push those together and bring that down and pin it into place and then you can see what it looks like pinned right here coming up but it actually turned out a lot cuter when I stitched it this is just pinned into place so that's how I handled the excess fabric I like the look towel I really like it if you guys liked this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video bye